Inland. Now what you're looking at here, Mike, is the tropical storm watches our uh, warnings rather in hurricane warnings. Hurricane warnings are up for a large portion of central Florida, extending from coast to coast, from the Gulf Coast to the Atlantic Coast. That's right through Tampa and Orlando. This is likely where we see the most damaging winds, but the storm surge is likely going to be a significant part of the story with Milton. Here is the latest as of 10 a.m. We will get our next update from the National Hurricane Center here in the next 30 to 45 minutes. I do think they're finding a stronger hurricane than 150. I can zoom in and I want to show you the eye of Hurricane Milton. This is a telltale sign that the hurricane is restrengthening. So what happened overnight was it had that pinhole eye yesterday, got up to 180, record low pressure almost, and then it started to go through a restructure. The wind started to broaden out, and that means the winds came down some to 150. Now it's coming back together, contracting and intensifying, and that's why the eye is popping back out. Remember, in the eye, there's sinking air and there's warm air, so that's the calm eye right there. It's not very big, but that's a sign that the hurricane is back on its way to Category 5 status. Hurricane hunters are in there right now. They have gone through this thing now five times. They have gone right through the heart of it, and every time they've gone through, they have found the pressure to be slightly lower. Lower pressure corresponds to a stronger hurricane, so they're giving us valuable data this afternoon, and uh, they are finding it a tad bit stronger. The official track, keeping it a powerful hurricane up until landfall, and I really can't preach enough. Um, if you're watching this maybe from over in Florida, perhaps do not focus on these categories so much. The bigger story here will be the storm surge, which is coming regardless of if it's a four, a three, a two, a one. I don't care. The surge is coming. Landfall will be tomorrow night into the early morning hours. There's the landfall location somewhere around Tampa Bay. Now, the important part for Tampa Bay on if they get the high surge will depend on where it comes on shore. If it's just south of Tampa, great news for Tampa, bad news for Sarasota and closer to Fort Myers. If it comes in a little further north, you get worse surge. This corridor of purple here is where we could see 110 plus mile an hour winds. These are your most damaging winds, but the red are still damaging winds too. 75 to 110 here in red, and that extends all the way through Orlando. So this is going to be the corridor where power outages are most likely. And while most evacuations don't include going to Orlando, you need to go even further north uh, away from the stronger winds. Here's the surge 10 to 15 feet. That is 15 feet above your feet of storm surge getting back up into T T Tampa Bay, Sarasota here, even down towards Port Charlotte and Fort Myers up to 10 feet of storm surge is looking likely. And once again, the worst surge will be right on the southern side of that eye wall wherever it comes on shore. So for Tampa's sake, they wanted to come in further south, but it could easily come in further north and that would be worst case scenario. I was checking the data. There has not been a landfalling major storm right in Tampa since 1921. The population back then was a couple hundred thousand. Now it's millions of people and that's another problem. A lot of people down here, a lot of people come from the north. They've never gone through these types of things. They're not like us where we've gone through so many hurricanes and storm surge events. For many in that area, this will be the first time they've ever experienced